think this is, this is not a surprise, but you knew this was coming. Yeah. Um, so what were the last couple of days like for you? It's, uh, I don't know. I, I, I imagine I'm sweating this out. You're just sort of waiting for the inevitable happen. Yeah, yeah, I, I think... Uh, you know, you, you saw the writing on the wall uh, as, as the season progressed, and I think we knew pretty early on, uh, you know, what he was hopeful that could, that could happen. Um, so, uh, you, you know, you can't, you can't necessarily prepare for something like this, or at least you, you can maybe in a couple of years in advance in terms of recruiting. Um, but there's not a whole lot of preparation we, we could uh, we could make for this. But I'm really really excited. I I, I can't tell you how excited I am for him. I'm fully supportive. Yeah. I, I did want to ask you about because I remember when when D'Angelo declared that that said he knew like they scrimmage like West Virginia. D'Angelo yeah. threw some crazy passes. Like well, it's gone. Yeah. And I didn't know like did you have that moment this year? Like well, we're not gonna have here. You know I I think once you saw him pile early in the Big Ten season, pile game after game after game of, of playing at a really high level, Bill. I think at that point, you started to get the indication. It really did not happen until that point necessarily for me. You kind of got indication of that, but once he started to put week after week after week together, and maybe all of it was validated against Michigan State here, I think you started to get the sense then. What were the conversations like between the season and now, trying to no, I, I think he realized that his his um, the timing is is, is right, uh, given that he's 22 and given that he's got his degree and and all of those things kind of lined up. I think he feel he realized he, he made a significant contribution to our program. Uh, in his time here, but certainly this year, both his play and his leadership. So I didn't sense a whole lot of guilt on his part. I didn't want him to. And, um, you know, I, I, I wanted this to be a decision that he makes um, um, with the, the right frame of mind. And I think he, honestly, Adam, I think he was pretty, uh, he f felt pretty strongly about the decision he was made. We talked uh, a couple days after our season ended maybe on Monday, it was on Monday or Tuesday, I can't remember, and spoke for a while. And um, at that point, I pretty much knew that this was going to be a situation. Throughout the season, you always said, you don't want to look at big picture stuff or look back on the whole season until the whole chapter has been written for Harvard Martin. What sort of legacy is he leaving behind now that this, this door is closed and he's moving on to the next chapter? What, what is, I know that it's fresh, but what, what is Kato? Well, well, it's significant. It is significant, just like it is with JT. And I think those those players, the good ones here that we recruit as a coaching staff, will all realize that they stand on the shoulders of those really good players that came before. And those those good players, those good leaders, those guys who represent this university at the highest level. And I think he realized that, and so did JT. That's why I think they felt... Um, an, an obligation in a lot of ways to kind of put this um, to make the program relevant again and and uh, you know they stand on the shoulders of all those guys that have done it so well before him so what he what he now can leave here uh, he can now leave here knowing that that he did that that he positioned the program uh, in a really good place and now he's got to pass the mantle on to um, to to the next the next group, and now it's their responsibility to, to lead it in a really effective way. And your next question may be, who's going to that going to be? And I would say I don't know yet. <laughs> and uh, I think we are going to have kind of another end of year. We want to make this about Kate as much as possible. We we'll probably will have another end of the year wrap up to the season at that point. Coach, what is what does this do? Not only for for him, I know it obviously had a lot to do with it. But what does it do for the program and your coaching staff in recruiting to say that you can pitch, pitch that to kids that you are putting talent in the NBA? Well, I think he's you know it's got to happen first, right? You know there's some there's some work to be done, but he's positioned himself in a really in a really good way. But you know now and come draft times, a really important time for for Kata. Uh, but but when that happens, um, you're right. I think it it. You know, early in the season, I think he was interesting. Early in the season, he was a little bit of a microcosm of how we were viewed. And that, and that is, 
Not a whole lot was talked about with him in terms of the next level. Full of potential, but I never saw him on any mock draft before the season got started. I didn't see him on one. Maybe he was, but I didn't see him on one. And um, and I think what it what it speaks to is is that he really worked hard in the off season. He developed, um, and uh, our I think hopefully he feels like um, that we you know we helped him get there uh, in whatever way we could do that. Uh, and, I, and that, as you mentioned, that's something that, that sure is good that we can communicate to recruits and say, hey, look at, look at what um, Kata and JT, look at how they were developed in just the one year that we, we had with them. So, um, you know, he'll, he'll be a good example uh, for that in recruiting. Chris, you said, you know, maybe the writing had been on the wall for a while, a couple months maybe. In the post game locker room after the second round, you called it kind of moving hard so they can see what happened. Yeah. As, do you, is that wishful thinking? Were you hoping that the door was not closed or that it was still open to get come back? How long does the coach let himself maybe try to talk himself into another year of K? Um, you know, you can dream. Uh, <laughs> but this is, you know, this is, I did ask him, I said, what was the one thing uh, that might have changed your mind? you know, to say, hey, I need to come back. And he mentioned um, if the team struggled or was just average. And I said, I wish I would have known that during the season. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen here, I have a little bit of impact when it comes to that, so uh, we might have changed the course of a few games. I'm kidding, obviously. But uh, um, but uh, I, I think that, uh, you know, I. We got we got a pretty good indication as the season progressed that this is you don't want to have those conversations. I think I the last month of the season I had one conversation with Kata when I both felt like he was worn down physically, and I also thought maybe the weight of this decision was um, was wearing on him a little bit, and I just grabbed him and said, "Hey, you know, here's my kind of reminder to just be you." and lose yourself in the team as much as possible. You'll feel a lot of freedom when that happens, because I did feel like it was all kind of uh, coming together and putting a lot of stress on him. And he responded really well to that. Does it, I don't know, I don't know if it makes any difference at all, but does it help to have the finality of him saying, gonna hire an agent, and now you, you suspect all along you could yeah. We're going to have it, but now you know for sure and can go back to plan. Yeah, I think so, and I, I, for sure. Um, but more than anything, I'm just really excited for him and his family. And just really, really genuinely happy for uh, Kata and his family for, for this moment. But for us as a program, sure, um, it allows us to move forward. I think, you know, in recruiting, uh, there's not a whole lot, you know, there, there's not a whole lot of Kata Bates Diops out there uh, right now that we can just kind of go and and grab. So I think, um, you know, in the future, if we know this might be coming a year out or two years out, you can hopefully plan accordingly in terms of how you put your recruiting classes together. But um, uh, right now, we'll just celebrate with him and then we'll kind of figure out what the next step is. Chris, obviously you only have one year with, with Kata, but is there one moment or one thing about him that will specifically stand out to you just to kind of define him as, as a bump guy? Well, I was, I mean, I, again, the Michigan State, two things. The Michigan State game, I was so, you know, I, the game was, I think, whatever, CB, CBS game, and it was number one team in the country. So when you see a guy who performs like that on that stage, um, you're just really, really happy for that young man. So, so that's one. The other thing was uh, I pulled him out of a game early in the season in the first three or four minutes of the game. And because he, he just wasn't playing as hard as he needed to play. And uh, one of you guys asked him about that. Doing your job, right? You know, you're trying to create a controversy. I get it. No, <laughs> but you're doing your job. So one of you guys asked him about it. And I think his response was incredibly telling to me. I, you know, he didn't, we didn't, I didn't say to him, hey, this was need to be your response. But he just said, hey, coach, you know, coach said I needed to play harder. And that's kind of, I'm paraphrasing, but that's kind of what I want. And I think we realized in that moment this this guy is going to be good, you know. I, we realized long before that, but it validated in our minds that he was all about the right stuff. You can't be a really good player 
and, and resist coaching. And uh, he didn't resist coaching. He was the opposite. He craved coaching. And it's, a, it's, it's why I think he's going to be a really, really good pro. Chris, you've talked from time to time throughout the season what you just referenced about keeping his motor high and yeah. sustaining his aggressiveness. Um, I think that's a question that NBA scouts are going to have. Sure. Um, can that come from only him, especially now that he doesn't have a college coach reminding him about it every day? Um, is that going to have to come from him, or can an NBA coach like you did bring that, try to bring that out? Absolutely, an, a, an NBA coach can. And I think, you know, any of us um, should should be aware of our blind spots, right? Those areas that we have to improve in. I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, this, as a coach, I want to be aware of my blind spots. So that's one, you know, in his, that's an area he's got to continue to grow and improve in. And I think he's aware of that. And I think uh, both the agent he signs with, as well as the guys he trains with, as well as his future NBA coach, will will continue to um, to coach him up in that area. And the best thing about Kata is he wants that. He wants to be told the truth. Kata Bates Diop wants to be told the truth. I go back to our first meeting when I had that conversation. He wants to be told the truth. Good players want to be told the truth. And I, I really do think that that that. Uh, Listen, he's he's going to play at the very at the very elite level, the highest of the highest level, and I think in order to do that at a really high level, um, he's going to he knows he's got to continue to grow as a player, and I think he's really open to that. Chris, you, you were saying obviously in recruiting now you can't go out and grab right. Kata right this second, and I know you're going to recruit the best kids you can recruit no matter what, obviously in every class, but. He's a top 30 national kid, yeah. you know, that came here. That's right. That to coach him, to see the impact he had, Big Ten Player of the Year. I don't even know how to ask this, but like, is it just like a reminder of like, man, like, we need to get a K to Bates D up in recruiting yeah. every now and then. I know, you know, not right now, but just in the scheme of things. Sure. That's a, like, that's a top 30 kid who became a star. Absolutely. Yeah, it's 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 an absolute reminder. That um, that you got to have, you know, it's it's as basic uh, as it sounds. You got to have really good players and guys that have the potential to develop into really good players. And it's been well, you know. I think I've said, you know, I've said over and over about the, the class that, that Coach Mon and the staff brought in with, with that with that group and some really talented guys. And and uh, and he was one that was always on the verge of reaching that potential. Uh, but he, he still had some good moments and played in the NCAA tournament. I think his freshman year he had some really good moments there. But absolutely, it's imperative. And I think it's it's a reminder too for for us as a coaching staff, not that we needed to be, but you know, he, that's in our breadbasket of recruiting that we would like to recruit effectively. And K to Bates Diop, I think, is everything we as a coaching staff would want in a future Buckeye. He absolutely is a Buckeye. Um, he's selfless. He's about continual growth and, and development. He's he's not into his own. He's not, not into his own stuff. He's obviously got talent and potential. Um, he's been well raised. Um, he's everything you want. And you know, I think that um, you know. Well, I just think you know that. He, he's in our breadbasket, and he's, he's a Buckeye, and that's what we got to continue to recruit. It's good. Um, you knew that you were losing three players after the end of the season, Jay Sean, Cam, and Dockage, and then, you know, somewhere in the season, you kind of started to think about, you know, Kata maybe going as well. Just how hard is it, or how much do you think about filling those holes during the season and when do you start thinking about that? Like, we've got some big holes to fill with Jay Sean and Kata and Candy. Yeah, I'll, 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 sure process. thing. Yeah, sure, sure. I'll touch on this kind of briefly and then we can maybe talk about it more when we close up the, the, the season uh, press conference. But, uh, you know, we thought about it as soon as we got the, 
as soon as we got the job. Now, I don't think as soon as we got the job that we know we were going to lose Kata. At that point, we did not. You know, we thought it was maybe a possibility, but we didn't. But um, I think it's, listen, we, we've got some work to do in, in recruiting. And the only way you can sustain success is to have, is to build solid recruiting class after solid recruiting class after solid recruiting class and not have too many holes uh, in those classes through whatever, you know, transfers or defections or whatever. And we've, we've got to get back to building some, some consistently solid recruiting classes, but that's not going to happen overnight. So we knew who we were losing. We knew that was a possibility. But in this first recruiting class, we just focused on we need to have a solid recruiting class, whether we have Cato or not. Just kind of going off of that really quick, just how, sorry, just really quick, just how hard is, I mean, in college football, you know you've got these kids for three years, but when you start recruiting at a high level in college basketball, it's like, okay, this guy could leave after one year. There's only so many spots on the roster as compared to football, and, you know, just you talked about making sure that you get those recruiting classes every year. Just how much harder is that to do, knowing that if you miss on a guy, that's going to affect your team for the next however many years? Yeah, I mean, it, it, the old recruiting adage, and it's true, it's not the ones you don't get, it's the one you do get who don't fit, aren't quite good enough, those are the ones that really hurt your program. And um, that's the recruiting adage for years, and it's true. It's not usually the ones you don't get, it's the ones you do get that for whatever reason don't fit. So um, I, I think that certainly we'll feel this, but we'll feel the loss of, of JT and Cam and Andrew. Um, and what you hope is can you absorb it with the classes behind them? Uh, and obviously we, we've had some, some uh, Tough stuff happened with the classes behind them, but we've got a you know we've got a, a good group that we've got to continue to build upon with with our roster. When you were taking the job, did you talk to Thad about Kata? What kind of player he was, is, could become? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I talked to Thad about every guy, um, but did talk to Kata, Kata a little bit, and um, you know I think at that point there was so much in flux. At, at that point, we didn't really, really know what was. You know, we knew he was going to graduate. We knew he could stay at Ohio State. We knew he could graduate and play somewhere else. We knew he could go to the NBA, but we just, you know, our, I did talk to him a little bit. And then uh, the coaches you, you played against this year, did they give you any feedback on what they've seen from Cato over the years? Um, before I got the job? No, like during the season? Yeah. Uh, no, we don't tend to have those conversations. Um, uh, a whole lot during the season. Before the season, they said, hey, um, and I, I, stuff I share with them early on, you know, good player, full of potential, has to improve his motor, and, you know, that kind of stuff, and toughness. Um, but the, the comments I got from coaches throughout the season was just, they were really impressed with him overall, his overall impact on the game. Just really impressed with how he could impact both ends. This is half K and a half future question, so I hope it's okay. Um, when you took this job, I think people wondered whether or not you'd be able to recruit one and done guys, which, correct me if I'm wrong, you've, you've not done no. previously in your career. Never have, no. Is there any value for yourself in the coaching staff and that you essentially had a one and done guy in the sense that you got paid in June, you thought he'd be really good, he was really good, and then he turned pro? Is there any valuable experience in that? You know, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know, Bill. I think that. Uh, you know, I just come back to um, when I get asked that question that we're really, I think we have an idea of how we want to build uh, our, our program as a coaching staff um, and, and how we want to go about doing it. And I don't really want to confine it to uh, not recruiting this type of player or recruiting this type of player. Or, you know, he's got to be just from here and can't be from there or vice versa. The biggest requirement for us is do they fit our criteria of what a what a Buckeye looks like, and man, what a great example with Kata and JT and those guys, and um, they absolutely are that. So um, I don't think we are ever going to say it's it can't be this, 
or it, it just has to be this. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, if that's a one and done guy that turns out to be one and done, or if that's a guy that turns out to be here all four years, uh, we'll definitely have some four-year guys. But I think it's if I, it's going to look like a mix, and it's not really going to be dependent upon. What it, the only thing it's going to be dependent on is do they fit how we want our program to be run. And if they don't, you know, it's, I've said this when I took the job. This may not be for everybody, um, and we're okay with that. Um, but the ones like Akeda Bates Diop, really talented player, who are Buckeyes, those are the ones we really have to pursue with with incredible uh, persistence and hope we can add to the program. And then when you think about what Kato might be in the pros, we know he has a very versatile offensive game, but his mid-post ability, I think, is not something you see a lot in the college game. How do you think that's going to help him when he starts being evaluated? By him? He's a big-time shot maker, and I think he can do it at all different spots. The th I, I really give our coaching staff a lot of credit because they did a great job both in skill instruction with him and getting him to his spots on the floor. And Kate is probably the best, and Ryan Peden has said this multiple times, Kate is probably the one of the, maybe the best guy I've ever coached. If you get him to his spot and it's over. You know, he's, he's going to make something good happen. It's, you just got to get him to his spot. And when we struggled at times, it was teams that, you know, thought it was a football game and somehow were allowed for it to be a football game, and they didn't let him get to his spots. And uh, that's, that's if he struggled, that was part of it. But he was, he's unbelievable if you get him to his spots. You talked about working on the motor with him to get that day-to-day grind. -day I guess, how did you work on that with him? And because I was obviously he made improvements in that this season. I know that's still sort of a knock on him, but how did you see him work on it this year and get better at it? You know, we just tried to um, make sure that his approach every day, that he was committed to that. Uh, that his effort in practice was almost like a game day effort every single day. And I think we felt like that could improve his motor. Um, and then we, you know, reminded him in the course of a game uh, if he wasn't quite doing that. Um, uh, but I just think that that was kind of our, our – Coach Q did a great job as well, keeping him in, in condition. And, and Kata owned that. You know, he owned, hey, this is where I have to – Continue to improve him. And then, since he's already a graduate, does this impact uh, APR at all? You know? Yeah, good question. Obviously, uh, APR is a major factor uh, for every program, but certainly for our program. Um, and um, uh, he has some academic work that he has to complete, Adam. Um, that will uh, that he's he's committed to completing. Um, and if he does that, he he will not. Uh, his APR will he'll, he'll, he'll help us. If he doesn't, he'll hurt us, but he's the kind of young man that he's going to complete his academic.